Are you entering into news business? Absolutely yes. Are you in touch with some Bollywood actors to start a movie or series? The answer is yes, but when I started 9XM, mm. everybody laughed at me when I said that I am not going to have live VJs and mm -hmm. I will just introduce animation characters which was Chote, Chote and Bade. And 9XM mm. hit the roof. If you were producing a movie and had to cast an actor or an actress, who would it be? I think for action movies, I think Akshay Kumar is still very good. Sun Kissed Phoenix is a dance drama that I'm producing. Who is going to play the role of Phoenix? I will be playing the role of Phoenix. It resonates with my personal life a lot as well. We are going to launch it at Kushwan Singh Literary Festival okay. in Kasoli on the 18th of October. Who is your favorite politician? A lot of regard for our Prime Minister, uh, Sri Narendra Modi, and I will tell you why. I'm kind of very single, very happily single. Do you believe in dating apps? Ah! <laughs>you know, in the last uh, two years, like you mentioned, you know, my life has taken a new turn and um, I have kind of, uh, you know, delved into several different areas. But what is really has really become my passion now is dance. And uh, I have always loved dancing, but uh, I've never really had the opportunity or the time really to train as a professional dancer or even get into that field of really dance dramas and so okay to answer your question uh, sun kissed phoenix is a dance drama that i'm producing okay. i have produced rather and uh, i will talk to you more in detail about it during the course of the interview uh, and i will also kind of give you a peek into all the things that we have mm. done, all the challenges mm. that we have faced during the production and uh, why I feel that, uh, you know, something like a dance drama is going to be very interesting, mm. even from an audience point of view. So where can audience see this dance drama? Is it going to be live dance drama? And who is playing the role of Phoenix? Ah, all right. So let me uh, start off with uh, uh, how the idea of Sunkissed Phoenix came to me. So as I mentioned earlier that uh, I've always loved dancing, but I never had the opportunity. So it's only in the last uh, year and a half, I'd say exactly 18 months that I have started training in dance mm -hmm. and it started off basically just more as a healing activity and uh, more as a, uh, it was not a hobby mind you, I realized it the day I started dancing that this is some, some you know, one area that I'm going to explore more and more and I'm going to get more engaged with dancing. Uh, and along with that, I also realized uh, that uh, you know, dance itself, I think, can reach out to people overall so much because normally they say you dance with joy. You know, it is a form of spreading happiness, right? Uh, and as I started training in dance, I started training first in ballroom dance. I'm still training. And then I started with Bharat Natyam. And that is when I realized that, hey, listen, you know, we are kind of gradually, you know, moving away from live performances. Mm -hmm. It is more of everything is so audiovisual on the digital platforms or on OTTs and the movies and like produced 
you know, as a kind of the perfect piece, perfect piece, perfect presentation with all the cuts and all the perfections. Mm. Now, which is what cannot happen in a live dance drama. So, is it going to be a live dance drama? Yes, okay. it is going to be a live dance drama. And uh, this, I mean, later I may put it out uh, elsewhere as, you know, in, a di in different media, on different platforms and as a different medium. But the true, I think, talent hmm. of artists really, I feel, uh, you know, can be observed or criticized or whatever. It may be good, it may be bad, whatever. But you see the true artist in a live performance in the fullest capacity. It is being produced by Indrani Mukherjee Enterprise, mm. okay, so which is a team of very interesting people. Uh, it has been written and directed by Dr. Sandeep Soparka. He's obviously very well known in the dance field. And uh, we are going to launch it mm. at Kushwan Singh Literary Festival okay. in Kasoli on the 18th of October. Mm. And uh, this dance drama of Sun Kissed Phoenix, basically, um, you know, it resonates with my personal life a lot as well. Mm. And um, I would say, um, I wouldn't say oddly enough, I would just say luckily, uh, the theme of uh, Kushwan Singh Lit Fest this year is also resilience, renewal and rebirth. So which resonates so much with me, you know, with my own life, I, you know, I have never allowed really circumstances to weigh me down at any point. You know, I have always risen above everything you know, risen in good times mm -hmm. and bad times. <laughs> so this is yet another, uh, you know, opportunity, I feel, uh, to reach out to a lot of people. And also, I think it would be very inspirational and motivational, the theme itself, you know, because Sunkist Phoenix is all about rising from the ashes. Mm. And here I believe you can rise from the ashes again and again and again. So it is just a very uh, kind of, I think, interesting opportunity, I would say. And when, um, you know, people from Sanfik, uh, from Kushwan Singh Lit Fest uh, approached me, they spoke to me about, because I'm an author, I've written Unbroken, yeah, published book. by HarperCollins. Mm. So that is when we said, hey, listen, you know, it's a, because I am obviously getting back into all of this. So I thought this was a very interesting way, a good stepping stone, which I am doing it in a very, very small scale. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel that it is also a very interesting space. You know, this drama, theater, live, a live dance drama is a very interesting space to be in. And uh, also very soul-filling, I would say, because dance is my passion. We will talk about you entering into the media business or not, but two questions before that. I still haven't answered one yeah. question. <laughs> Who is going to play the role of Phoenix? Uh, well, um, uh, I wanted to keep it a secret till the last day, mm -hmm. but I will be playing the role of Phoenix. And uh, I have actually had to undergo not just, um, you know, very intense dance lessons uh, you know, for this role here, but I also had to do an entire acting course with um, Kundan Chaudhary. He's also a very well-known acting coach. So I had to go through an entire training phase of almost like 10 hours every single day for the last, I would say, almost uh, three months just to do this 50-minute play. So is it going to be 50-minute live dance drama? Yes, it is going to be And you know, 50 minutes. two things I really want to ask you about. Yeah. The very first one, what message are you trying to convey with this live dance drama? And how did this idea, you know, come into a force that it should be a live dance drama instead of a movie, documentary you have already done or anything else? Why live dance drama and 
is it based on your real life experiences uh see sun kissed a uh, phoenix is uh, not my story but the story it is uh, you know an egyptian story right uh, the it's it's a mystical bird phoenix is a mystical bird and uh, the story of sun kissed phoenix is you know how to win the love of sun god mm. she has to go through several tests right challenges in life and ultimately you know she wins it's victory for her and she rises from the ashes you know with renewed powers and uh, you know she's blessed with immortality and she is married to sun god in that i mean in the play she's married to sun god but this is based on egyptian mythology and uh, the reason i feel uh, though it is not directly my story but i feel that i have gone through several trials and tribulations myself in life several mm-hmm. tests challenges i have been um, at the peak of success i have also seen rock bottom but i have uh, not just survived i have i think uh, survived very well and i have uh, managed to kind of uh, you know get out of those circumstances trying circumstances and rise again and uh, you know live a wholesome life so the message going out there are two messages that human spirit you know innately is can remain unbroken and is mm-hmm. always unbroken the spirit it is just you know i think your approach towards life no matter what your circumstances are mm-hmm. what you want to make out of your life okay what you want to make out of your life is how you are going to drive yourself or you will reach that point of and you know what success is very subjective you know there is no end to success what is important is you know are you satisfied with what you are doing are you happy do you feel it is a success otherwise there's no end where is what is your benchmark of success is it an oscar is it a padma shri is it you know these are great benchmarks but i feel uh, you know there is so much of talent and today with this entire digital world i have realized that there are so many stars i think that whole concept of stars mm-hmm. every common man is a star that is what i have realized you know so there are two messages once I, one is i think we have to uh, i think people need to get more involved with live performances and why the need because that is where you see the artist you know live and in their fullest fullest uh, you know performances or their talents you know you can really see it because there are no retakes there are no you know cuts there are no edits you're just if you've made a mistake there you have to learn how to carry on with the rest of the show because you will forget that's a given and the other message is that no matter what your circumstances are it is in each one everybody has a phoenix inside mm. and every single person has the capacity to rise above everything and you know to kind of embody the spirit of positivity and believe and believe and deliver success to their own standards whatever their you know their mm-hmm. uh, idea of success is and it's as it does not matter you know because other people's opinions is not your reality it is not your destiny either it is just what you feel happy with is very important as you mentioned earlier that you have launched a production house and we all know you used to be a 
big and huge media tycoon business media tycoon are you entering into the business world again number 1 number 2 we all have seen your pictures and videos with khans and you know with bollywood actors stars are you going to produce a movie also okay my answer to your first question absolutely yes okay okay so i will definitely see i am now i think ready it's you know i needed to reach this stage of readiness where I am kind of getting back into the media industry and uh, there are so Indrani Mukherjee Enterprise is actually not just a production house that is something I have created as you know the umbrella company so I would be uh, very slowly so I'm taking very I would say baby steps let's put it that way which is why I started with my passion which is dance okay. okay so my first production of you know whatever I'm doing right now is my passion and that I will continue doing I will continue producing plays I will continue producing dance shows I will but that is not really I'm not looking that at that necessarily as a business model right okay. I would look at that more as you know feeding my soul now coming to business but at the end of the day i am also an entrepreneur you know that the i main think question, runs are in you entering into news business ah uh, uh maybe 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 because it since is, 2007 it has changed a lot it has evolved a lot yes it yes. is not the same that it used to be right now we have social media now we have different yes. channels so many big players yeah so. okay so i'll tell you if or as and when i enter the new space because everything has evolved a lot and everything has changed a lot right in the last even how people look at news i think uh, perspectives have changed and i have also realized with so much of information you know available uh, online mm-hmm. uh and there's so much of activity you know your life is like has become a virtual life now literally everybody is on their instagrams or you know primarily on instagram i would say uh, i think lesser and lesser i mean that's sadly enough lesser and lesser people are reading news in the physical format of a newspaper though i love reading newspapers even today that's how my morning starts mm. i read newspapers every day Uh, I'm a little bit old school I think but uh, apart from that what I have realized that lesser and lesser people are also watching news on television I mean I can't remember the last time I put on the television to watch news because everything is just out there so much on digital media I'm looking at options I am in conversation or uh, with people as far as the news channel goes and uh, i am in conversation are you planning to buy a new license and start a news channel uh licenses are available okay okay so whether i have got it as yet i will not tell you that i want to do it and i'm hoping it'll happen but i don't want to do news the way it is being done right now so it is going to be what i have in mind is definitely going to be a clutter breaker i can tell you that i'm very sure and um, there is news out there so i am thinking of doing it very differently how practical it is and how possible it is are the you know things that i'm looking at so i am in conversation with people to give a product which is definitely going to be different from are you seeking some funding also who is going to fund it well if anyone wants to put money who says no to money mm. <laughs> but I'll, are you funding it by yourself or do you have see, some investors see those calls i have not yet taken okay. those calls will eventually i mean it's all in my head mm. but what i'm trying to do right now not trying what i'm doing right now is uh you know getting the product together because that is when you sell your product if you don't have the product there's no point and how possible it is 
how do we break even how do we because it's a business and again at the end of the day you know uh, any investor has to believe in that and uh, there is also going to be a lot of uh, kind of uh, speculation will it be a success will it not be a success my job is to deliver the product you know the fruits are not in my hands i will try my best to give the sweetest fruit but the rest i think will all happen in good time but i will put in my hard work that mm. much i can say that i will put in my commitment i will put in my hard work and i will do my best i think i figured it out in my head that if i get into news i'm definitely going to do it differently okay. and i'm going to uh, so i can't spill all the beans right now like just give us drop some uh, hints yeah so uh, the answer is if i uh, can put together what i have thought like you, you remember when i started 9xm mm. everybody laughed at me when i said that i am not going to have live vjs and mm. i will just introduce animation characters which was chote bade chote bade you yes. can talk about so it yes. was your idea absolutely that, okay. absolutely i mean that's that's yeah. a known fact yeah, yeah. It, it's a known fact and uh, it and everybody laughed i was criticized yeah. even before the channel launched oh i mean she's mad you know how is it going to work and at the end we all used to love that chote it, bade I, and 9xm hmm. hit the roof and it took the music uh, you know uh, tv channels in the music uh, this thing by storm really and everyone after that started copying that right yeah. so i am thinking no i won't have animation characters of chote bade for news mm -hmm. but i can tell you that so my now i have to think i think beyond ahead of the curve a little bit and i have to think beyond 9x okay so let's put it that way so and i am thinking beyond 9x i can tell you that are you in touch with some bollywood actors or influencers to start a movie or series or uh, having yes chatting with something yes. that let's produce a movie uh the answer is yes okay i don't know when i'm going to do it but it won't be like i won't say i'm going to do it 10 years down the line no that's not the answer the answer is yes i will be dabbling into production Uh, of movies as well full fledged movies uh, yeah, i would i would but i i haven't put a timeline to it that i have to do it in the next uh, you know i'm not in a t you know the good part is now uh, you know i'm kind of very single very happily single and it's given me almost like you know everything now i've got a open canvas i have no responsibilities do you, you believe are... in dating apps ah <laughs> no. Uh, no you know it's oh. it's not so much about no but i think for someone like me it is going to be very very difficult to uh, be on and a dating and if you are on a dating app it will become a whole sort of news in itself oh, but that's all right yeah. <laughs> i think that'll be that'll give you all not you guys but that'll give a lot of people more mm. content you see but sure. uh, it's it's not that i don't believe, i've never actually explored a dating app mm -hmm. but uh, at this point in time i mean see my life has been as everyone's aware it it has been a bit rocky not bit very rocky uh, by normal standards it's been very rocky for mm -hmm. several years i would say for about 6 years post which now i feel that in the last 2 and a half years gradually you know i've healed i've kind of been able to uh you know uh put my feet on my ground mm -hmm. and feel very comfortable I, i'm someone who's very comfortable in my skin no matter where i am i always have been and i always will be so uh now i feel i'm ready and uh, ready for a lot of things and if you <laughs> ask me ready about, for a relationship or something see i'll tell you about uh, relationships uh, i feel now as far as uh, you know my children go they are all grown up they are settled everything it's just uh, that like i said i'm single uh, but i don't know whether uh, you know i can i have that kind of bandwidth at this point mental bandwidth i would say to get into a full fledged relationship if i meet someone 
um, I don't know whether how, where, whatever, I don't know that as yet. But uh, I would like to be able to, at this point in time, I think my work is my primary focus. Mm -hmm. But if I meet someone interesting, I think I have always been able to balance everything well. So <laughs> and wh what's your point of view about having an open relationship? You know, in 21st century, we have seen that a lot, you know, yes. people having multiple partners and it's quite okay nowadays and yeah. people are quite open about it. Yes. What's in, your opinion in having I have multiple in fact, partners? Uh, several friends, you know, who are also happily married hmm. and they are into open relationships. And like you said, it's become a very, I don't know, there's a particular terminology for that. I don't even know what that terminology of open relationships, uh, that you date multi, and that you yeah. can even be in love with multiple partners or multiple people. Well, I have, um, honestly, I think I'm a little bit old school uh, thought as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I mean, with time things change, uh, but I don't see myself ever, I think, uh, dating more than one person at a time. At a time. At a time. Let me <laughs> clarify that, okay? Okay, at Because a time. for me, I am also very clear that I don't believe in um, staying. I'm fine being single. Mm -hmm. I'm fine being divorced. I am fine being married. I'm fine being unmarried. I'm fine just be in a civil partnership. But I am not fine being in a relationship where I'm not happy in. I'm very clear about that. So I would, I'm fine with everything else. Just to divert the conversation a bit, we were talking about movies and you producing a movie and you said you are going to do that not in the next 10 years, but soon. And if you were producing a movie and had to cast an actor or an actress, who would it be? Well, it depends, you know, Let's I think... talk about we, action movies. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Action movies, I think. Well, I don't think I will be doing and I would be in an action mm. movie. I think for action movies, I think Akshay Kumar is still okay. very good. I think so. But there is a newer crop of uh, also actors who have come up. So I think it is going to be uh, more talent based and it will depend a lot, I think, on who is directing. Now, I think all directors also have, uh, you know, I would say blind faith in mm -hmm. certain actors and which is how it should be because I think you have to give that uh, freedom to a director to also kind of decide who's going to be the best cast. Mm -hmm. See, producing is one thing, but I think I genuinely believe that uh, I think the success of any good movie lies a lot on the shoulders of a good director. I believe in that, mm -hmm. yeah. Even more than the actors. Actors are obviously there. I mean, if they don't do a good job, the entire thing falls apart, right? But I think direction is so crucial. And I think uh, the kind of leverage that, or the kind of, the importance of the director, mm -hmm. I think is still not understood by a lot of people. This is what I feel. Let's come to uh, uh, other actors also. I think uh, there are a lot of uh, new, apart from, you know, the Shah Rukhs mm -hmm. and the Salmans mm -hmm. and the Amirs who are um, brilliant actors, you know, they all of them in different areas, they're great actors. And like you mentioned, you know, from, mm. I mean, I have, yeah, they've been, you know, I've been personally acquainted with each one of them um, at different times, you know, because they have kind of, uh, they've been at my shows or for other things we have interacted um, when I was running INX Media. Any personal anecdote that you can share about any of the cons? Uh, uh, well, I think each one of them, um, uh, I would say, uh, are very different personalities. But they're very interesting personalities. And I think uh, they have, to be very honest, they have won the heart of hearts of the audiences because I think uh, their public presentations mm -hmm. are brilliant. I would say brilliant, brilliant. Not, I'm not just talking about work. 
they know how to conduct themselves. I mean, everybody makes their mistakes and mm. everybody has gone through their, you know, own personal uh, dis things. I mean, I don't want to talk about that because that's personal lives. You know, I've had my share of problems. They've had their share of problems, criticisms, everything. But I think overall, I mean, they are not stars for nothing. Okay. Yeah. So they've, they are all very extremely hardworking and uh, I think also very good individuals, you know, each one of them in their own capacity. That is one. And uh, I think also the female actors, I would say, oh, I mean, again, there are very interesting actors, but very recently, you know, I'm talking about, let me talk about the younger actors okay. now, because again, you know, uh, I would, even if you're talking about female actors, there are brilliant actors in the industry, some underrated, some... Who, according to you, are underrated actors? Uh, I feel, uh, for example, for a mature role, you know, somebody like a Tabu, I think she's brilliant. You know, somebody like a Tabu, I would say, somebody like a Vidya Balan. Mm. I'm talking about the mature actors. Yeah, but they are not underrated, right? They are not underrated, mm. but I feel, uh, you know, they could be out there with way greater opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole concept in India, I feel, but that's gradually changing, that women actors, female actors, once they reach a particular age, Mm -hmm. You know, they are not out there as much as, uh, you know, they should be. I feel that. Mm -hmm. This is my personal opinion, okay? So, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, then, uh, like, very recently I saw uh, this movie um, on, on, in fact, on a flight called Control. And uh, I think Ananya Pandey was brilliant as an actor, brilliant. I was, I was very pleasantly surprised actually mm -hmm. from where kind of, you know, so I'm talking about the newer crop of uh, actors, mm -hmm. you know. And then older, I mean, when I'm saying, uh, you know, there are of course, I don't even have to name uh, actors mm -hmm. right from you know, Rekha till up until Ananya Pandey. There's mm. so much of talent. Uh, but I think she was very good. And I would be, at some stage, I mean, I'd really like to see more of her. But, but I'm talking about talent. Okay. You know, which uh, was, I think, I mean, I, I thought she was very good. We were talking about politics. Who is her favorite politician, by the way? Uh, okay. So, uh, again, you know, I don't want to see, I am uh, not, again, let me clarify this. I am not an Indian citizen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, know you that. know that. Yeah, you know so, that. Yeah. I am not politically inclined. Mm -hmm. I am neither right wing nor am I left wing. Okay. But if you ask me, are you asking me about an Indian politician? Yes, Indian politician yeah. you really like, love way. He addresses people and the way he or she, anybody yeah, who talks yeah, to people. Okay. So... Uh, who you think is really inspiring and taking yeah, India forward. Inspiration and yeah. taking India forward so in I, terms of having I good ideas. I have a lot of regard for um, our Prime Minister, uh, Sri Narendra Modi. And I will tell you why. Again, I'm clarifying it. I am not saying this because I'm neither right wing, I'm nor left wing. And... I'm not even interested in politics, I'll tell you that. Have you ever met him? No, no, not as yet. So, uh, I mean, if you're asking me that, have I sat down and, you know, forums are very different, okay? okay. But forums, yes. I mean, I've been to a lot of, even as recently as, uh, you know, last March, I, would, as, uh, I was at the India Today Conclave and, you know, we were all speaking at the same platform, whether it was Sri Narendra Modi or Nirmala Sitharaman or, um, you know, um, Amit Shah. We were, uh, that is very different from, no, did I sit and have a conversation like you and I are having mm -hmm. with Sri Narendra Modi? No, I okay. have not, if that's your question. Mm. So, uh, uh, what I wanted to, yeah, why I think that he is, or why I really look up to him and I really admire him for two reasons. Uh, one being that, uh, you know, he is from the grassroots. He understands, uh, I think, what a common man is. 
and from where he himself has i think grown from like really grassroots mm -hmm. from a very i think he's still his living is he's still very simple living high thinking i feel even despite being the prime minister of you know the country uh he has he is a visionary and uh i don't think he is a regular human being i will tell you when i say that he is he's a very evolved spirit a very evolved human being and he has faced you know from the time he started from his young days uh to where he reached in gujarat where he took gujarat to and then now i mean he is people love him you know there are a lot of of course there is always you can't keep everyone happy mm -hmm. right and where he has reached you know the visions he has and he is so what i like about him he's got a sense of humor also a very good one he's a fantastic speaker and uh, he is i think the way he handles criticism i think it is commendable apart from what how india has progressed and again there are these whole things that yes you know there is still so much of poverty there is still you know there are still so many problems in india but again at the end of the day we are also a hugely hugely populated country and to whatever degree it is not what we have become what india has become in hundreds of years it is not possible for you know one wh whoever the party is it does not matter uh you know whether is it really uh, realistic that in a period of 4 years or 5 years everything is going to change around and you know turn around and we are going to be at number 1 in the world but what i like is he has the vision and he believes he can do it that is very interesting he believes mm -hmm. let's go back to sunkiss phoenix that we started our conversation with in the last two years you have had one docu series one book and now this live dance drama which is going to be played on 18th of october how at the end of the day how do you want people to see you like how do you want people to perceive you after whatever has happened everything how do you want them to see you see i think uh, you know like the saying goes perception is reality you know that has been the thing but i have also realized over a period of time that you can't you know please everyone okay that's a very important i think lesson that i have learned over a period of time and this is you know you learn lessons in life and this is one mm -hmm. of the big lessons i have learned mm -hmm. uh so i think i would allow people to take away what they take away after seeing the play i want to convey the messages that i have already discussed that no matter what you must not allow ever your spirit to be broken you must continue you know fighting challenges and evolve and make a better version of yourself each day that has to go mm -hmm. with everybody everybody and you know with more positive things and art i think any art form can do that to you and which is why this dance drama because it's art at the end of the day and um, so i am hoping that people are going to love it i am hoping that people would uh, take out as much positivity and feel that positivity through this dance drama that is my intent mm -hmm. but then at the end of the day you know also i uh, am not close to the idea of you know the grape sasa so that is also going to happen and uh, there will be some people uh, you know who will judge by growth mm -hmm. i know that it is very common but i also know that there will also be a lot of people who will rejoice you know my growth and uh, success i know that so that is 
what I think I have learned over a period of time, uh, you know, relationships evolve. You kind of, I have learned now to build relationships in this period of time with everybody, all different stratas of, you know, people coming from different stratas of life. These are all, you know, man-made divisions, right? Mm -hmm. All these divisions, you know, ye ye background mm -hmm. se hai, wo wo background se hai. These are all man-made. But I have learned to kind of find, uh, you know, I know who my well-wishers are and I'm very happy. And uh, it is all right. I think I would uh, just, I just do believe that I need to continuing my, you know, continue my own journey. Mm -hmm. I need to continue my own uh, path in terms of, uh, you know, where I want to reach and which is not necessarily always work. I've got several, you know, directions or several these things. I love meditating, for example. I think that's, you know, reaching nirvana. There is another aim that I have. So, uh, so let's see how it all goes. And I want to really become a good dancer over a period of time. I'm a novice. Also, I must uh, tell you, you know, this entire thing of dance drama, mm -hmm. I was very inspired by three people, you know. Uh, one is a friend of mine. He's become a friend now called Simon Beck. Mm -hmm. And he is a very uh, well-known uh, musician. He's essentially, he's a music composer, but he's also a very well-known pianist. And uh, also Hal Khalitz, he is uh, uh, the grandson of P.G. Woodhouse. And uh, I met all of them last year. And that is where this whole thing, and Matthew Bourne, he is a very well-known, um, I mean, you know, in the world, I would say, choreographer. He has uh, done a very new version of uh, Swan Lake mm -hmm. with just male dancers. It's very, very interesting. And then he's done Edward Scissorhands. And it's like he is rocking right now. So when I saw all of this, uh, you know, and um, Hal is also into, you know, theater and dance dramas, musicals, essentially musicals. So uh, with, uh, you know, a lot of conversations that I've had with them. So I may do something outside also. So if I, I'll, I'll let you know, that's, that's <laughs> my dream to do a really good musical in Broadway someday. So it does not matter whether I perform, I don't, uh, you know, it's more I want to produce and put one show out that, that I'll definitely do eventually. So, so, but, uh, so these people have uh, been really conversations with them have been really, really inspiring. And that is when I thought that let me take baby steps and do something more for a cause first. But Sun Kissed Phoenix also, we are going to, this is a short format, mm -hmm. just for a stage show as a, for the Lit, lit Fest, right? And I, we would be doing this in some other festivals, this format. But we are also planning to make Sun Kissed Phoenix into a auditorium format, which is going to be an hour and a half, which will be a ticketed show. This is not a ticket. This is purely by invitation. Mm -hmm. And so that will be a ticketed show. And that is going to be obviously at a very, very different scale, very different kind of whether it's music, whether it's the number of dancers, the number of, I mean, here, you know, because it's a stage show, right? Mm -hmm. So it's your, and it's a traveling show. This is more of a small traveling show for stage, which is very different from an auditorium show. So that's going to be at a much larger scale. And uh, I'm hoping to, in, you know, engage some interesting, even more, like more interesting names in the production of that show. So who has designed costumes like specifically? Yeah, actually, um, the costume of Phoenix mm. has been uh, designed uh, by this um, very young designer. She's very, very talented called uh, her name is Asra Syed and her brand is called uh, the world of Asra. And uh, it has taken her a very long time to really design it because it is a bodysuit with glass tassels on it. And okay. she needed to do it very carefully because if you, as uh, you know, when you see the promo of my mm. show, 
Uh, you know, there is a lot of body contact and flow contact mm -hmm. and there are fight sequences and there are a lot of lifts and drops and, you know, so which can, one has to be very careful with glass tassels. Yes. It's not just that, uh, you know, uh, my partner who's dancing with me at that point can injure, get injured even, I can mm -hmm. get cut with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of law work there. So she's designed it uh, in a very interesting way, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it is looking very good. And it took her, I think, almost two months to just make that costume, you know, from scratch. Mm -hmm. So to get the right kind of fabric, to get the right kind of glass, um, uh, this thing. So it is not fiber, it's glass, 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 mm -hmm. when we say glass. So, which gives it the actual shimmer and the look, mm -hmm. because I'm supposed to be a bird there, right? Not me, the phoenix is a bird there. So, you need to have that look and always just feathers is a very common, that's what people expect, you know, that if anyone is playing the role of a bird, mm -hmm. you definitely have some feathers around. So, we just wanted to give it a different look. And the rest of the costumes are, uh, have been arranged and are uh, have been kind of this thing by Sandeep Soparkar and they are all from the Sandeep Soparkar ballroom studio. So uh, that is how the costumes are. Let's see. I hope, you know, while I'm performing, I don't injure myself or I don't <laughs> injure anyone else in that outfit, mm -hmm. but it's looking good. Thank you, Nrani. Thanks for having a chat with ANI. Let's see how your plays goes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.